I am sick and tired of tripping over cords and light stands. It's time to do something about this. Jeff Jantz here at Janser Studio. So my studio is over my garage and it's not exactly tiny, but it's not huge either. So when we get a few people in here for a shoot, it can be a little bit crowded with all the light stands. So what I'd like to do is build an overhead rail system that I can mount all my lights to, get all these light stands off the floor, and then we can string up cords off the floor. We'll have a little bit more space in here. For our Art on Earth YouTube channel, by the way, if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check it out. We explore why art is important on our planet. But anyways, we've been using overhead shots for some of the art projects that we do there, and I've just been mounting the camera to the C-stand, but you can see that it's a little bit wobbly, and that's not exactly ideal for a shot that you want to be stable. So I'm also counting on being able to mount cameras to this overhead system to make our overhead shots a lot more steady. I started looking around online to see if there was something I could just buy and install that would suit my needs. But the only thing I could find was over $1,000 and it really wasn't big enough. So I started designing my own using just hardware and things for the most part that I could get from my local building supply store. There are a couple things that I had to order online and I'll put a spreadsheet to show you all the materials that I used in a link below. But the best part of this is I was able to come up with something for under $300 and it's gonna be a lot better than what I would have been able to get on Amazon or B&H for over a thousand. First, let's take a look at the ingredients for this recipe. I've got some nuts and bolts and just random hardware and then I'm gonna use these clamps and rollers later in the project. I've got these metal strips with holes and some three quarter inch conduit, and also this unistrut. Now the unistrut, along with this nifty little roller here, that's kind of the key to making this thing adjustable. I thought that I'd be able to bolt this directly to my bracket, but it turns out the head of the bolt is gonna get in the way of the roller. So I went online and found that they sell these special brackets specifically for mounting unistrut. And the roller just slides right through. I really love the high ceilings in my studio, but they're sloped. So that's gonna create kind of a challenge trying to figure out how I can mount my rail system level in a place with ceilings that are not level. If you have a level ceiling in your studio, this whole project could be a little bit easier. I need to make some custom mounting brackets, but I'm going to have to figure out what they're going to look like. Now that I've got the paper all set up, I can take it to the table and kind of lay things out a little bit. The second set of brackets will be about six or seven feet over. And because of the angle of the ceiling, these brackets are gonna to have to be a lot bigger. I was careful to write down all my measurements so I can remember where the bracket goes later. Now that I've got this all figured out, I'm gonna transfer these marks to a piece of the metal strip, cut it, and bend it on the vise. Okay, so this is what the first set of brackets are going to look like. A couple of quick little adjustments. So basically, I just got to do the same thing for the bigger brackets. All right, I think I'm ready to install this thing, but I'm gonna need a little help on this one. Shout out to my buddy Doug for coming over and giving me a hand. So remember those measurements that I was keeping track of before? This is where those are gonna come in handy so I can make sure that I get these brackets at least close to where they were on the wall before. There'll be a little bit of wiggle room, but they still gotta be in about the right spot. I want to make sure that we're drilling into some wood there. There's going to be quite a bit of weight on this, so I want to make sure it's going to hold. The last thing I need is lights crashing down on someone's head during a shoot.
I'm using some pretty heavy duty lag bolts, about three and a half inches long. Now we'll slide the unistrut in. You may have noticed that the bolt holding the two brackets together is a little bit long. That's so I can adjust from one end to the other to make it level. And tighten it up. And now the other side. I'm going to use my laser level to level it from one side to the other. I could just use a 2x4 with a level on it, but since I have this, I'm going to use it. Dude, are you sure that's strong enough? Only one way to find out. Okay, yeah, that'll work for you skinny guys. I don't think I'm doing that. Okay, back to work. One last little adjustment. Now we're going to put in the cross beam. And let's see how it fits. Oh man. It's sticking a little bit. Oh yeah. It's, it's like dragging on just a little bit. So maybe we should re engineer that now. So the problem is that when we slide it through, the conduit hangers are hitting the unistrut hanger, and just causing a little bit of friction there. So I think we'll be able to solve that by adding this half inch aluminum bar stock. We were also noticing that the tabs on the roller were bending a little bit as we were bolting on the conduit. So adding this aluminum bar stock should help fix that problem too. Sweet! It slides right through now. Let's see that one more time. In order to keep this thing from sliding right out of the end, we're just going to stick a fat little bolt in there. It works! And now for the fun part, adding the lights. Some of the systems that they sell online have these really cool pantograph brackets, but they're a little bit expensive. So I found these wall camera boom mounts online, and I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with the quality. I would definitely recommend these to anybody. I got three different types, because I think I'll have some lights that need to be higher than others. So I really wanted to experiment with some rollers because I thought it'd be really cool to be able to mount a camera to one of these and get some rolling shots without having to spend a bunch of money on a slider. But it turns out this is a little bit noisy, so it might work, but probably not for a shot that includes audio. But it's still kind of neat anyways. And of course, the simplest design turned out to be the best. I just used these PVC conduit clamps. They fit kind of loose, which is nice because then it slides back and forth. So I realized once I got this in place that I really needed to figure out a way to get some lights even higher. So I found these online that just stick out a little bit and I made a really simple design for this and this one worked pretty well too. Another really simple way to mount a light is just by using these conduit clamps. I'll be using the Studio Super Clamp for mounting the camera. 
I decided after getting all this up that I really wanted it to be even wider than 10 feet. So I went to my local plumbing supply store and got some 14 foot black iron pipe. And I made a third rail. Now I just gotta figure out what to do with these cords. So I mounted my surge protectors to the ceiling and figured out some other creative ways to keep my cords organized, including using shower curtain rings, which ended up working really well to kind of take up some of the slack and keep things in place, but still leave things a little bit flexible. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's super versatile and really easy to adjust. You see that? Nothing to trip on. All right, that about wraps it up. So I hope that you found this video helpful or at the very least interesting. And uh, if you have any ideas on how to make this project better, or if you have questions about how I did something, please feel free to use the comment section. And I hope to see you in the next video.